In the previous subject that you may have done in probability, probability theory, the approach tends to be that we have some idea of the model that's driving um, what we're looking at. So this might be, I know I'm flipping a fair coin 10 times. And the question might be, what's the chance that I get three heads? What's the chance I get the same number of heads as tails or something like that? And then we would use the model to work out how probable we think certain events would be. Statistics approach is more the other way around. There, I still have an idea of the underlying model. But now I gather a data set of observations and we want to say whether or not these observations give us reason to reject that model. So keeping with the coin flip example, if I think the coin's fair, I might flip it 10 times, count how many heads, how many tails, work out the chance of seeing what I just saw, if the hypothesis were true. And then based on whether or not my observed data set would be probable or improbable, if the hypothesis were true, maybe I keep believing the hypothesis, keep believing the coin's fair, or whether the data set gives me reason to reject the hypothesis. So that's more of a statistical inference. So inferring whether or not our model needs to be retained or changed. The whole other branch of classical statistics, which is a wholly other thing, which is estimation. So this is more where maybe I've got a conceptual model that says this is a binomial variable, but I don't know the parameters. And using a data set, not to test a model which is clearly defined, but to estimate the parameters or some properties of that distribution. Now, before we get to that, I just want to introduce a little bit of uh, statistical definition. So if I've got a distribution, a random variable. I would say the kth moment is just the expected value of the variable to the kth power. So the expected value of k to the x would be the kth moment of the variable x. You will also sometimes see instead of what sometimes get called just moments or raw moments, we have a central moment. And a central moment is just looking at um, the moment relative to the expectation of the variable. So the kth central moment is just the expected value of x minus its own first moment to the power k. So a couple of these are, I hope, quite uh, familiar. That the first moment of a distribution is the mean. The expected value of x to the 1 is the expected value of x which is its own mean. And the second central moment is the variance. The second moment is the expected square, expected value of x squared. But the second central moment is the expected squared distance around the mean. And so is the variance. Now you can do higher ones than that, we will tend only to need to work with things like means and variances. But higher moments do capture skewness in a distribution or kurtosis, which is how heavy or thin the tails of a distribution are. In theory, I can keep gathering any moments as long as they exist. We'll tend only to see first and second moments, but not, not exclusively. Related to getting the moments of a distribution, we can also get the moments of a sample. 
So let's say I've got x1, x2, dot, 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 up to xn in independent observations of the variable x. Well, the k sample moment is just add up each of those raised to the kth power, divide by the number of terms in the sum. And again, I can do a kth central sample moment, which is working out the difference away from the first moment, raised to the power of k, so it's averaged. Now, we've already seen, if you look back at the previous week's video, the weak law of large numbers, we know that for very large samples, as the sample size tends to infinity, we know that the sample moments should tend towards the true population moments of the distribution. And we can use this to estimate the population parameters from, well, hopefully, a large enough sample.